Welcome to the latest episode of In the Office. I'm Jay Goodrich, and today I'm going to highlight some of the features that I'm most excited about for Adobe's upcoming version of Lightroom. Last week, Adobe released a beta version of Lightroom 5, and I've spent some time perusing the beta with great success. If you have taken a workshop from me in the past, you already know how devoted I am to using the Lightroom platform in my daily workflow. The features of this newest version of Lightroom will have me bypassing Photoshop more often for my image corrections than ever before. Four. So here are five of my favorite features for the upcoming Lightroom 5 software. Number one, I travel a ton. While traveling, I store all of my images on external hard drives. The benefit to this is that my main computer hard drive, the one that holds my operating system, stays relatively empty. The downside to this is that I currently have to have my hard drive plugged in to my laptop in order to work on my images. Well, in Lightroom 5, Adobe's changing this with a little functionality they call Smart Previews. If you look underneath my histogram up here on the right, this dialog tells me that I have an original and a Smart Preview image available to me. So I know if I disconnect my hard drive, I can still work on this image in the Develop module. And to show you how this works, if I go into my Import module and pick a hard drive and a folder, up here on the right hand side of my import dialog, I have a little checkbox option called Build Smart Previews. And all I have to do is check that box. And when I import my images, Adobe will automatically generate a smart preview of that image. That smart preview is what allows me to work on these files if my hard drive has been disconnected. Now, if you forget to generate a smart preview on import, you just go up to the dialog that's below the histogram, click on it, and you get a build smart preview dialog. And Adobe asks you if you want to build a smart preview for this photo. So all you have to do is click build smart preview. Now, the one piece of information that you need to know when you do this is that original image and the hard drive have to be available to you in order for Adobe to generate that. If your hard drive is already disconnected and your smart preview hasn't been generated, you can't work on your image in the develop module. So now just to show you how this works in the develop module, if I go over to develop and I'm going to unplug my hard drive. Okay, so now with my hard drive unplugged, you can see up here below my histogram that my dialogue is now different. No longer says the original is available plus the smart preview. It just says that my smart preview is available. And if I hover my cursor over the smart preview, I get a dialogue that says the original is offline, but this photo can still be edited. And if you scroll down, you can see all of your sliders and all of your adjustments here in the develop module are available to you. Very cool functionality here in my first feature that I'm really excited about having. This is going to make my job a lot easier when I'm traveling because once I import and generate those previews, I no longer have to have that hard drive attached. I can just work on the images with my laptop wherever I'm at. And then every evening I can just plug my hard drive in and all of the adjustments I made in the develop module throughout the day will be synced into the XMP sidecar file of the original that's on the hard drive. The second feature that I'm excited about is the Visualize Spots checkbox that is activated when you're using the Spot Removal tool in the Develop module. If I come up here to the top of my Develop module and I click the Spot Removal tool, here in my toolbar I have this Visualize Spots checkbox with a little slider. And once I activate that, this slider adjusts the intensity of what I'm seeing through the image. And as I increase its intensity, you can see little circles in my sky of my image here, 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 here. The cool thing about this tool is that it's not just visual. I can leave it on and use it to clone out the dust or I can turn it off and go find the dust on the original image. So let's just turn it on real quick here again. In my upper right, I have a piece of dust. If I turn the visualized spots off, you can see that dust spot right there. So I can leave it on and clone it out and turn it off. And I've cloned out the spot of dust. If I hide the boundaries of my spot edit, you'll see that the dust has in fact been taken away. A very cool additional feature available under the spot removal tool now. Next is the spot removal tool itself. 
In Lightroom 5, Adobe has updated this tool completely. No longer are we bound by cloning out items with a circular configuration. We can now just click and draw in an image to clone out just about anything we want. We also have the ability to move the source cloning after the fact which is something that isn't available to us in Photoshop. So if our cloned area that Lightroom picks automatically doesn't really work with what we're trying to achieve in our image, we can move this tool around infinitely after the fact, which is really cool. The other aspect of this tool that I really like is again, it's non-destructive like all of the Lightroom adjustments, which means it's not destroying any part of our original raw file. It's just writing instructions into our XMP sidecar files. Okay, so favorite feature number four is an actual new tool in the develop module called the radio filter tool. It has the same functionality as the brush tool and the graduated filter tool, but it's geared towards applying the vignette. You no longer have to conform to a center-based or single vignette in an image. We can now apply as many vignettes as we want and as many varied shape vignettes as we can dream up. The tool resides in between the graduated filter tool and the brush tool here in the develop module and to apply one once we turn it on we get a little plus symbol very similar to the graduated filter and we just click and drag from our center point and that allows us to create this beginning vignette now if we didn't want to just use the vignette feature of this tool as far as darkening edges and highlighting something we can use all of the functionality that we have in the brush tool and the graduated filter tool as well so we can make changes to exposure contrast highlights shadows clarity, saturation, even noise, color, and defringing. Very simple tool to activate and very easy to make multiple adjustments to the tool. We also have the ability to feather the tool just like we would a vignette. And then we can also invert the mask that the tool creates if we wanted the adjustment be contained within our shape or not invert the mask if we want our effect to be contained outside of where we're drawing our shape. And the other option, we have the ability to add multiple radiations filter tools to a single image. So we can use this tool to highlight just specific areas of a certain image. In other words, if I wanted to just highlight this peak and these peaks, I could now do that with just a simple click of adding a secondary tool. So another great feature in Lightroom 5 that allows us more control over our final image. And okay, that leads me to my fifth and final feature that I'm most excited about here in Lightroom 5. It is geared more towards the architecture photographer, but it would work in any situation where your lens is creating a dramatic perspective that you don't necessarily want. If you're a nature photographer and you were shooting in a stand of trees and you were shooting from a very low perspective, the leaning of those trees could be easily fixed with this next update. Adobe has pretty much redone the entire lens corrections palette in the develop module and they've added a little basic tab that allows for a very quick correction of perspective. So here under the basic palette I have the ability to correct for this vertical distortion by simply clicking one button. The auto button under the upright dialog. Click it and immediately it fixes for that vertical distortion. Now the image is laying off to the side of the frame a little bit because my actual camera was probably not level. So if I go into the manual corrections and just go under my rotate and rotate my image back by 1.5, I've pretty much straightened my image. So very cool functionality they're adding now in the lens corrections palette as well. Well, those are my five favorite features that I discovered in the Lightroom 5 beta from Adobe. If you head over to the Adobe Labs website, you can download the software for yourself and discover your favorites as well. These five new features are not it though. Adobe has updated the slideshow module to now allow us to integrate videos seamlessly with our stills. Page templates are now customizable and user savable in the book module. And we can look at our images full screen with just the tap of the F key. And if you still feel overwhelmed using Lightroom, join me for an upcoming two day workshop in Seattle this September 14th and 15th, where I'm sure we will be highlighting these features and the entire functionality of the Lightroom platform. So I wanted to thank you for joining us for another episode of In the Office. I'm Jay Goodrich, and we'll be seeing you real soon in another upcoming episode.